Eddie, Eddie, this is a continuation of my hour-long video about my crabs and my fish and how to take care of them and everything. All I was saying, my video cut it out, so what I was saying was is that Eddie would take his claws and do like this number at me with both of his claws. Hold on, I'll show you exactly what he did. Like this number. Like, you can't really see because my camera doesn't want to be do right. Okay, there we go. He took both of his claws and did this number at me. Like, he just shunned them both up at me and did that. And, um, Eddie's my jumbo. That one right there in the back there. But, again, all I'm saying is they will pinch. If they pinch you, do not yank them off your skin. Do not pull them off your hand. Do not submerge them in tap water to get them to let go. Just bear the pain and put them back in their environment. Let them climb off your hand on their own. Because what they're telling you when they're pinching you is hey i don't feel safe i don't like you because i don't know you it's not because they don't like you it's because they don't know you and let me rephrase that they don't know you so they don't know how you're going to hold them they don't know how you're going to react so make sure your hermit crab is familiar with you before you just jump up and pick it up you know you don't want to frighten the crab. You don't want to stress it out because they do stress very, very easily. And like I said with Lily, she did stress while molting. All it was is the fact that she couldn't get that last part of her shell off. I saw on her claw where she was still gripping onto it for dear life, trying to pull it off. And she stressed out because of that little tiny piece that she was trying to get the rest of her skin off and it stressed her out and killed her. So they do stress over nothing. So you do not want them to overreact to you. You do not want to cause them to freak out in any way. Um, certainly do not drop them because if you drop them, that will cause them to not want to be handled in the future and it will make them very shy of you. It will make them very skittish. It will make them very skeptical of being held, meaning they will be very, you know, very preserved like Amber was, kind of bashful, not really moving a lot, not very content, not, you know what I'm saying, just very shy. And you don't want that. You want a healthy, active, will let you pick them up, will let you play with them, crab you don't want anything to happen to your crab that you can't pre that you could prevent you know so and if you do have a crab that passes away just know that there are other ways to buy a new one but i wouldn't say do that right away especially with children and i'm not going to get into that subject but all I am going to say is this. You, you need to teach them to accept pet death. Because this will happen with any animal. They will pass away. It will be heart-wrenching. Like I said, my baby, my Lily, she passed away on my birthday this year. And that's exactly what you want to see and hear on your birthday. But it happens. You know, there's nothing I could have done about it. There's nothing I could have done to stop it. It just happened. So, you know, and even if I did help her get that off of her skin, it would have caused damage to her. And that's another thing. If they're molting, you do not want to pick them up because it will damage the crab. Um, it could possibly kill them. Because you run the risk of squishing them, damaging vital organs. Their skin is very fragile when they shed their exoskeleton. You could actually rip their skin open. You could break a claw. You could knock them in the head and knock them out. Um, cause severe brain trauma. Um, 
And I know a lot of that's unheard of as far as brain trauma, but I'm pretty sure it can happen if you squeeze their head or knock their head on something, trying to rush them to, out of the tank to the ISO. So what you want to do to prevent all that, if you catch a crab doing a surface molt, or if you catch a crab digging, even if it's just them digging a tunnel around themselves, because they will do that. They'll dig a tunnel around themselves to isolate themselves from any temperature that's, you know, not their normal temperature of 75 to 85 degrees Celsius or 72 to 85, excuse me. Um, if it's not in that temperature range, say their temperature was 60 in the tank, they would dig a hole around themselves and just lay in it. And use their shell to encapsulate the rest of them inside that little hole. If they're doing that, then they're probably stressed and trying to calm down. But if they're digging all the way under the dirt, the likelihood is that they're molting. And if they're molting, you're going to want to put them in a little carrier like these up here that I showed you earlier. These little isos here. Um, you want to put them in something like that to be able to take care of them and make sure that, you know, they can dig and do what they need to do. Always keep their, um, iso tank moist with the same water you would use for their drinking water. Oh, hey, Amber. Look who's out getting food. Amber's up tonight. Eddie's starting to go in the hut. You see his shell over there. But that's amber there. But, um... See her? Isn't she pretty? Anyway, so back to my point, though. Taking care of crabs is a very big, big deal. They're not like a dog or a cat. You give it food and water and pay the vet bill and everything's fine and dandy until it gets sick and it needs to pass away or needs to be put down. You know, it's not like that. These guys require a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of research. And they're not something that you can just pick up and take home and expect to survive on, you know, whatever you give it. Because they're not. And, you know, as far as cleaning goes, always use Dawn because it's safe for animals. See my Dawn up there. My big jug of Dawn. That's what I use to clean their tank. That's what I use to clean their ISOs. Just Dawn. Uh, filtered water. And. A towel. That's all you need. That gets rid of the smell. That gets rid of the bacteria. And that also gets rid of any. Um, any issues with their shell, like dead skin or anything on the walls of the tank. It gets rid of that. There is one specific thing that I wanted to talk to y'all about, and that's mites. They're little tiny microscopic creatures. They look like spiders. And some species, you can see them with your naked eye, but they're literally the size of a speck of dirt. Or a grain of sand. So that's the biggest that they are. Is a grain of sand. So just keep that in mind. They are red mites. White mites. And I think black mites. But. The red mites. Are your. Your gill mites. And your gill mites. Are what. I said red mites. Yeah, red mites are your gill mites. Gill mites are what get in the lungs of fish and crustaceans, or actually the gills, rather. Um, that's another thing I need to tell you about. The gills of crustaceans and fish and actually cause their gills to close up, which is where they can't open their gills, and it will cause them to suffocate. And 
you want to make sure that that's why you want to make sure that you have a happy healthy active crab before you bring the crab home and find out that all the rest of your crabs are getting sick well that's likely the cause is mites now white mites look like the skin of your crab they're they look like flakes on on your skin but they don't look ashy like you know how our skin gets dry before we put lotion on it they actually break off if your crab is just ashy and needs to molt then it won't flake off but if it flakes off the likelihood is you've got a case of mites that need to be treated and there are no really no treatments for mites because if you use reptile mite remover it will kill the crabs because of the chemicals in it so actually treating crabs for mites can be very tricky there is no safe mite remover for crabs so the best thing to do is isolate the crab that you suspect caused the issue and clean the tank be hoping before it gets to any of the other crabs um and i would advise dropping the humidity because the humidity of the tank is what allows mites to thrive so say your humidity was in the 70 to 80 i would drop it down to 40 and as you can see that's not really detrimental to my crabs because amber's walking around just fine she's not showing any signs of stress or anything like that but you do not really want to do that but the reason why I'm saying that is because that's the only way to really kill a mite is to drop the temperature so they can't thrive in it. But, you know, you have to be very careful with that too because if a hermit crab has prolonged, um, where they get cold for a prolonged period of time, it could kill the crab anyway. So... You want to be careful of that as well. So you want to know exactly what you're doing when you're dealing with mites. The other thing I was going to say was that they do have gills that they breathe out of. They do not have lungs. They have gills, modified gills, what they call them. And they do have to have what they call shell water which is where like i've got these water tanks here you see these water water discs that's what they're for so that when they go down into the water they can submerge their shell just deep enough to get inside the opening of their shell and get shell water in there to keep their gills moist because if their gills dry out the crab's dead automatically so you don't want that to happen so always keep water deep enough for your crabs to go just the opening of its shell no deeper than halfway up its legs so just keep that in mind and i apologize for my camera cut now i do have a bad signal out here i am doing this through youtube so it is very hard to keep a signal I do apologize for it cutting out, but I hope this all this hour and 13 minute long information was helpful to y'all. I know I kind of rambled a little bit, but I wanted to get my point across in a very detailed and specific way. And I hope I've done that tonight. And one more thing I want to mention is that when you're choosing... A substrate for your crabs you see how I've got that is 100% hermit crab sand it is the same sand you use for lizards but you want to get sand you don't want to get gravel or anything any rocks any um, mulch or anything like that because they can't dig in it if they need to molt especially if they're a young crab they won't be able to do that because they can't dig in it they can only dig in sand so that kind of sand and i'll show you the coarse sand that i'm talking about they come in two different kinds of sand they come in fine sand like you see there and they come in coarse sand 
like this where the grains of sand you see how they're kind of like pellet sand so you know you see how it's like on my finger just like actual sand particles so just there's very fine sand and there's pellet sand either of these two work they come in a variety of colors you wouldn't really want to get colored sand though because sometimes the dye can be harmful to them but just make sure it's permitted for crabs as well as lizards and turtles and if it's permitted for crabs then it's likely safe if it just says lizards and turtles do not buy it because that means it's got toxins in it that a crab cannot withstand and that's what I did with that sand. It said for hermit crabs. And that sand as well for lizards, crabs, and other reptiles is what it, what it will say. So, and not all pet stores have it where it says that. So just keep that in mind. It is very hard to find one specifically for crabs. Now, there is a specific sand that's called hermit crab sand. They come in little one-pound bags, but it looks like this sand. It's just basically beach sand. And they also make some with um, little baby shells in it that says hermit crab sand. And I definitely don't agree with that because it carries contaminants from the ocean that may or may not be from where they're located from. So if it's not from their natural environment, then it could be detrimental to them because it could carry toxins and bacteria that they're not familiar with in the wild. Therefore, it could lead to them dying. So you don't want to get the one that has the shells in it. The other thing is, is that you want to keep in mind the health of your animal. If you realize or recognize that there's something wrong, like say for instance, um, they're not acting right or they're acting lethargic or they're acting out of it or, you know, they're staying on one end of the tank and not really moving, um, it could suggest one of two things. They're getting ready to molt or they are in molting phase doing a surface molt or it could actually mean that they are not healthy anymore and the best way to differentiate between the two if your crab is molting it will still go inside its shell when you pick it up and it will smell like a crab okay literally like a crab but if it's not healthy it will have a very rotten putrid scent to it that gets five times as strong when they're dead so you want to keep that in mind um that's how you recognize the difference besides their actions alone because a lot of times if they're acting lethargic or out of it that usually means that they're molting and if they're molting they're not dead but they will go into a very not moving state because their muscles basically get stuck in one position and they are not able to move when they are molting so do not assume that they are dead until you smell that putrid smell when you smell that smell then you know they're dead or dying but if you don't smell it they ain't neither so keep that in mind um, there are certain breeds of crabs. My favorite is the purple pincher. I have had one of the other breeds before. I did not like them. They were very chirpy. Um, they, um, they were very noisy. And I wound up having to give them away to somebody that would take care of them. But, um... I only had one at the time, but that's beside the point. The point is that you want to make sure that your crabs are happy, healthy, and always active. But, I forgot to mention, they're not active during the day. They are nocturnal. 
they come out at night and during the day sometimes you'll see them active like i'll catch amber out sometimes during the day just walking around but most of the time they are nocturnal so don't expect your crab when you first bring him home to want to do anything because they're not going to want to do anything because they're asleep they sleep all day and come out at night and amber's heading back to the amber's headed back to the hut there she's right right there she's headed back to the hut she's had her feel and now she's headed back but anyway that's all i had to say and if y'all have any questions please uh text my channel email me i'll leave all the links to the crab food in my description box if any of y'all want to know what they are i'll leave them there and i'm kind of new at this so kind of go easy on me i've never filmed my own youtube videos before I want to get into different things about crabs and um, fish and, you know, the animals that I've raised over the years. I'm very into animals, so um, I'm thinking about getting a turtle in the future. So I've got a lot of advancements going for me, you know, and I always do my research. My dad always raised me to do my research before I get anything. So that's always a good thing. Because if you don't do your research, you're not going to be able to care for that animal properly. So, always do your research. Don't go by my word for it. Don't go by anybody else's word for it. Do your research. So, look up anything you can think of. Even if it's wrong, look it up. You know, I mean, do crabs eat clams? Do clams eat crabs? Do crabs get eaten by seagulls? You know, whatever the case may be. What are their natural predators? What are their natural prey? You know, anything like that. Just look it up. Um, It's there. Believe me. Where do you think I got all my information from? <laughs> it's out there. It's all over the internet. YouTube videos internet videos, internet sites, it's everywhere. So, anyway, that's it for tonight. Peace out.